Again, the red plastic area, this is not, if I put this flash, actually we'll use an old 582 or 581 because it's a little easier for the demonstration. If I put this flash in slave mode, it's going to blink. That has nothing to do with the communication of your flash. All that's doing is telling me when this is up in the corner that it's ready to charge. It's the same thing as this little guy. Nikon has the same thing. So when this is in slave remote mode, this right here has nothing to do with anything else but letting you know it's a visual alert that it's ready to go. It doesn't do any autofocusing for you. It, alert, it does nothing else to it. So a lot of people put their fingers right here and hold that light up thinking this is what's picking up the signal. When in reality, this is what picks up the signal where your fingers are. And so just be aware that that has nothing to do with it. It will break. Um, this is an old, you can tell my old STE2 that is broken and they will pop off. Everything will pop off and come apart and you can pop the things back on and it usually works pretty well. But just be very careful, and I say that and I can't get it back on, but be very careful with this because if you do mess that up, pops off or something breaks, it can mess up your, your focusing at night with a flash. It will focus on different, um, thinking it's 10 feet away when you're five feet away. And so if you're in TTL mode, which is automatic metering, it's gonna put out too much light or not enough light because it's, the camera's gonna think your subject is, is not the distance that it actually is. So be aware of that. And the foot, this is something that my wife actually told me about. This is the radio popper foot, which I use, but in your flash, I just never even comprehended this, but in your flash, there's a little pocket that comes in the back of your, of your pouch that has a little slide-in foot. And most people never even look at that. Most people never even touch it. Most people never even use it. And my wife even said, and she's, an amazing, she's a better photographer than me, she goes, it took me two years to even realize that I had that, and then I was wondering what the heck do I use it for. I use it all the time as weddings because I mount my flashes on this foot, this is, again, the radio popper. It's not the one that comes with my flash, but I'll literally just mount my flash on here. Any brand will pretty much work. And then now I can sit it down. If I'm on a countertop, I'm on a dresser when I'm getting, you know, the groom's getting dressed or the, or the bride's getting ready, I can have my flashes in multiple locations. So it's nice. And then the other thing is it has the, the, mono, the, the mount for your tripod or a monopod or an, a light stand, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later, so I can actually mount them in different locations. Be aware, the older Canon feet are all plastic. They don't have a metal insert. Bad design, because one little hit of your light stand, it will snap and your flash will fall. So I highly suggest if you have an older Canon foot, you can go online, buy a Nikon foot. For many years, that was the only piece of Nikon, Nikon equipment that I owned, and I was getting you know, by my Canon friend just was, was giving me a hard time, but the Nikon has a metal insert and the radio popper part has a metal insert as well. And so it sounds such a small, insignificant part, but with the $500 flash sitting on top of a light stand, that will really save you some money. The other part that I wanted to be aware of is they are just a little insert. We got another one here. So they're just a little insert. And if you tighten down, so they're just pushed in there and they're glued. So if you're screwing this on a tripod or a monopod and you keep screwing, you keep screwing, you're actually unscrewing it from your mount and you're pulling it right out. So you're thinking, yeah, I'm going to get it tight. I'm going to get it tight. I'm going to get it. And you just keep, and then you're going to pull it right out and it's going to break. So be aware of that as well, because I've done that before. And you'll see, in fact, on that one that I just pulled out, it's actually out a little bit from us, someone doing that. And so you just have to kind of screw it back in and make sure that it's, it's back to working 